In today's video, we're checking out the EcoFlow Deltas. We do some load testing, capacity tests as well, and a little bit of solar charging. As we get the new unit out of the box, the first thing that you're going to see is your warranty information and also instructions. We'll remove the foam cover where you'll see your new EcoFlow Delta and also one extra box inside. This is what you'll see after you empty the box and on the back of the instruction booklet you'll see a quick start guide and a little notation on the bottom that says may the power be with you. We jump down with a Star Wars reference because it does kind of remind you of Luke Skywalker's charging station that he used to charge R2-D2 except without the dust cover. As we empty out the box, this is where you'll see all your accessory cables and also a little information on solar charging. You have your AC charging cable along with a DC charging cable with XT60 connector and another charging cable which this will be for your solar panels on MC4 to XT60 and a 14 gauge wire which honestly this should probably have been about a 12 gauge wire. As we get ready to charge the EcoFlow, this is actually a pretty common AC cable, so if it gets lost or damaged, you'll be able to replace it. On the side of the EcoFlow, you'll see under the cover, you'll have your DC inlet charging and also AC inlet charging along with your reset button. And as soon as you get it plugged in, you'll see the display will automatically come up and the unit will start charging. And this is what's nice about the Eco is that it shows you all kinds of information like your input wattage, your output usage, also the amount of charge that's on the battery and how much charge time is left. Below the display, you'll see your DC charging area. These two USB ports will charge at 12 watts each, the fast charge is at 28 watts each, and the USB-C connectors will do up to 60 watts each port, and it all turns on by the button that's listed below. On the back of the unit, you'll see a 12 volt charging socket and also 620 volt sockets that'll handle a three prong plug with a little dummy hole, that way you can plug it in in either direction to suit your needs. Now I started charging this at about 29% at about 10.05 so we'll see how long it takes and as we take a look at our kilowatt meter here you can take a look at our voltage or amperage at about 6.3 also our watts which is 727 going in which is a little different from the display 60 hertz and using about a quarter of a kilowatt so far and now that it's been plugged in for a little bit it's gone into a fast charge which this unit can actually charge faster than most other ones out there you can see we're almost 11 amps and over 1200 watts and that's one thing that's nice about the EcoFlow, it has the fastest charging rate at 1200 watts, so it can go from completely dead to fully charged in just two hours, which is pretty amazing. And now that the unit is fully charged, we're going to go back to the kilowatt meter and see about how long it took and how much power it took to actually charge it up. And so, as we take a look, you can see we used almost a kilowatt and it took about an hour and 23 minutes. As we start up our load test, we're actually going to use this heat gun along with a hair dryer that I have plugged into the back of the unit. We'll press a little AC button, which now this will turn on the display and you can see 60 hertz on the plug. And so we'll start with the heat gun first. And so I'm going to turn this on low and you'll see on the display up there it is about 700 watts. And then we're going to turn it on to full power on the heat gun and we'll add the hair dryer in just a second. And the display automatically changes to show you how much runtime you have left at about almost 1450 watts. And you can see the orange on the heat gun. Now that it's at full power, we'll go ahead and add that hair dryer as well. And this is gonna bring us up to about 1800 watts as you can see there on the display panel. And then we'll bring it up a little bit past rated load to see how well it handles a little bit of extra past what it's rated for. So we're gonna bring this up to right about 1950 watts, give or take, and then we'll see how long it lasts. So now you can see on the display, we're running about 1940 watts, and we'll see how long this lasts, just like we would on a gas generator. And during the test, the inlet and outlet fans turned on full speed to keep the unit cool, which this does burn a little bit of extra power, but it does a good job of keeping the unit cooler. And typically you don't want to run these units like this. This is really just for testing purposes to see if it'll do rated, plus a little bit more for a certain amount of time. And after about three minutes, the unit ended up shutting down, but it held its normal rated load just fine and a little bit extra. And now that we're done with that, we're going to go ahead and do a capacity test. And this is going to be like a mid-grade test. We'll do about 800 watts on the heater and see how long this lasts at 1260 watt hours, which will keep track with a kilowatt meter. And this will show you how long and also how many kilowatts we've used up out of the unit. We'll go ahead and turn on the AC power. We'll go ahead and flip this around and start our test by turning on the heater. And so if you look at the back of this, it has a fan position and then a heat one and heat two. And that's what we're going to use as heat one position. And this will give us about 800 50 watts of usage or draw and we're going to start this test right about 108 p.m and we'll come back about every half hour or so and see how well the unit is doing but first we'll take a look at our kilowatt meter and get some base numbers at 121 volts and 7.2 amps roughly which that might go down a little bit along with our wattage this should go down about 855 roughly we'll come back and look at it and then we'll also take a look at our hertz here real quick 
and this is going to be right at 60 that's where that'll stay our kilowatt hours and our amount of time and as we look at the display you can see 100% at 850 watts and now that it's been about 30 minutes we'll take a quick look back you can see our voltage is holding steady our amperage is just over 7 amps at 850 watts roughly and as we take a look at our hertz that's holding steady at 60 and we've used about 440 kilowatt hours so far now so far at 68 percent 52 minutes left this is rated for 1260 watt hours so we'll see where we land in a little while it has now been about an hour and 10 minutes and as we take a look at how much power we've actually used up We've used about a one kilowatt so far, so we're 260 kilowatts away from getting the rated spec out of this and holding steady at 857 watts is pretty much where it lives. And so now I've come back and it's 1% and it's one minute now. And if we take a look at the kilowatt meter again, we're at about 1060 on the kilowatt hours at an hour and 15 minutes. And we should be hitting about an hour and 40 minutes to get about full usage. But this has been here for about two or three minutes now. So it's kind of interesting to see it use up every little bit that it can to get to its rated spec. As we take another look back here real quick, we're at 1100 kilowatt hours so far as it continues to just kind of trickle down. And so I've been standing here just kind of waiting for it to just kind of die down. And it's been sitting at 1% and one minute for a while. And as you can see, we're now at 1130 kilowatt hours as it still kind of inches its way closer to 1260, which I don't think it's going to make it. And now you can see it's finally down to 0% and one minute remaining still. And it's just inching its way towards that 1260 watt hours as we gain on almost, well, it's 2.30 now. So that's basically an hour and 22 minutes so far. So we take a look back at our last little bit of numbers. We have 1160 watt hours, so still 100 away. And there it goes, it finally shuts off. So we come look at the front again over here. Now you can see it's at zero, no more power is coming out. And so basically this is rated for 1260 watt hours. We ended up going 1160 watt hours, which basically that's an 100 hours short. So if you were using a generator and it was supposed to run for 10 hours at a rated load and you did that load test and it only ran for nine hours, well, that's a little bit short and might make you think something's wrong with your generator, especially at $1,200 for these. So let me know down in the comments below if you think this should have got a little closer. I would have figured at least I could have got 1200 watt hours out of it and even the life cycle span at 800 cycles it goes down to 60 percent which isn't very good for these units considering they're this expensive so it's really meant for light duty as we take a quick look at charging it up with solar i put my solar panels out here a little while ago so they could get heat soaked that way we get some real numbers and i decided to get my old light meter out and actually try to get the best angle of the sun but i kind of ran out of adjustment on the solar panels so i did the best i could now on this Renergy solar panel set it has a pwm charger on it which you don't want to use because the ecoflow has one built into it and it's much more efficient so you just bypass that but we are going to use this little meter just to kind of double check as we look at the ecoflow you can see about 100 150 watts are coming in as we check it with our power works meter 154 at almost 10 amps which that's pretty much max what the ecoflow can handle and even though this panel can put out about 11.3 it's doing pretty well so far in the sun even though it's pretty low but the ecoflow you can see it'll take about seven hours at this rate and if you want to charge it up with a vehicle, you can use your DC 12 volt socket and it's going to take about 12 hours to do this, especially if the vehicle is just sitting, which I don't recommend because you'll drain the batteries dead. But with a vehicle driving, it'll do about eight amps max and that'll probably get you about oh nine, maybe 10 hours to fully charge it from where it is now. So what do you guys think? Should it have put out more power or was that an acceptable test? Leave some comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Be sure to like and subscribe. And until then, I hope to see you guys next time.